The school is using some of that money for a new early childhood mock classroom for teachers in training. When we want to really get across a point to the student about active supervision, we're able to actually use this environment um, to role model and to play out those things with the students. John Wood officials say the other part of that grant money will go toward technology and other items to equip students with what they need to be successful in the job field. New this morning, if you're an older adult looking for resources in the community, today there's a one-stop shop available. Happening today, the Salvation Army Croc Center in Quincy is hosting an adult fair from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They'll have nutrition education from local dietitians and blood pressure screenings, along with vendor booths from local medical professionals, Quincy Transportation, senior housing options, and real estate and funeral planning. We just really realized that we need to have more information out there to our community members about the different products and services that are available to them that they may not know about. The health fair is free. We have more details on what you should bring to the fair on this story at WGEM.com. Adding insult to injury, it looks like it's going to be a long harvest season. According to state officials in Illinois, planting delays in the spring could mean a significant portion of this year's crops don't mature on time. Illinois Director of Ag John Sullivan says that soybeans, which require a shorter growing season than corn, have caught, have caught up for the summer for the most part. But the state's corn crop is behind what it should be for this time of year. You know, we're going to see some challenges with uh, getting this crop in the bank, we, in, the, in, the, uh, in the elevator and in the uh, grain bins. And so we're certainly, uh, you know, we hope for some good weather. We need some good, uh, good dry weather. And certainly we still need some hot weather to finish out some of those crops uh, to get it to maturity. Sullivan also urges drivers to share the road with farmers heading into harvest season. Happening tonight, Keokuk City Council will begin talks about a franchise contract with Liberty Utilities for natural gas service. The city says the current contract expired five years ago, and it's been operating on a year-to-year -year basis since then. Now the city is looking to lock in a franchise with a 20-year term and amendments allowed at 10 and 15 years. The city wants to hold a public hearing on October 3rd to get comments before moving forward. Also happening tonight, the Keokuk Council looks to approve service to improve the wastewater treatment plant and its nutrient reduction strategy. Council will also review the potential purchase of a backhoe for the sewer maintenance department and a bobcat track loader for the bridge maintenance department. Happening today, Missouri Governor Mike Parson will be in St. Louis to announce steps that the state plans to take to address gun violence in the region. It's an area many of us travel to often, and this marks the third time that Parson has been in the St. Louis area this month as he looks to address a string of homicides, especially involving children. And they've been killed. 11 kids have been killed this year alone in St. Louis. Two other children's deaths are also under investigation. A federal judge denies an attempted compromise on Missouri's abortion ban. State lawmakers wanted to allow a ban on abortions after 20 weeks of pregnancy after previously implementing the law which criminalizes abortion after eight weeks of pregnancy. The law would have went into effect last month but was halted. And a live look this morning in Austin, Texas. We fo are following breaking news this morning out of this area where crews are still on scene of a massive fire. It looks at this point as we've been watching this live shot that at this point that fire has been knocked down. But according to local affiliate KXAN, the fire broke out in an apartment or condo complex that was under construction just before 4 o'clock this morning. Officials say the site is completely destroyed. More than 1,000 people are without power in the area. The local affiliate also says that nearby residents were evacuated. At this point, no injuries were reported. And again, we're monitoring the situation. And it looks like from that live shot, as you see just over to on the left corner there, that there's smoke coming from the site where at one point this morning we were watching flames shooting out of that area. Now to new details about what may have motivated an American Airlines airplane mechanic to sabotage a plane. The man sits behind bars this morning and will stay in custody until his trial after a judge denied his bond, saying he may sympathize with terrorists. John Lawrence has this new report. 
A bombshell during Wednesday's bond hearing for Abdul Majid Marouf Ahmed Alani. Prosecutors said the airline mechanic forwarded a terror video from his phone to another person. Experts worry about copycats. Whether or not this fellow is really involved with ISIS or not, now ISIS and other would-be terror groups have this possibility in mind. Prosecutors also claim the 60-year-old wrote, Allah, we ask you to use all your might and power against non-Muslims. Why does it take the prosecutors to say he's an ISIS member? Why doesn't he stand there and say, I did it for the cause of God. I'm a member of ISIS. This is confusing, this one. Alani is charged with willfully damaging, destroying, disabling, or wrecking an aircraft. Authorities say he tampered with a system that collects data like a plane's speed. You have to know how fast the plane is going to do a successful takeoff. It's a very dangerous uh, malfunction. The July 17th flight from Miami was aborted with no injuries reported. Alani had been with American Airlines since 1988. They do a criminal search and they, they also do drug testing. But once you're you know, behind the, the lines, once you're in the business, unless you show signs of something going wrong, you're kind of trusted. The carrier has fired Alani and says it's cooperating with the investigation. John Lawrence, WGEM News. Happening today in Washington, more details could come out on the new economic sanctions that President Trump has ordered against Iran. The president says the country is to blame for last week's attack on critical Saudi Arabia oil fields. He says the sanctions are significant, but some on Capitol Hill want tougher action. If they don't pay a price for bombing a neighbor's oil fields, then all hell is going to break out in the Mideast. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has called the attack an act of war, and he and Saudis are urging the international community to come together to counter the threats. Cleanup and damage assessment expected to continue this morning in parts of Houston after a tornado ripped through the area. The storm has left limbs of trees all over roads yesterday evening. Parts of roofs on some houses are torn off, and you can see there many trees literally toppled over. No injuries have been reported. And a big story this morning that's developing as tropical depression in Melda continues to slam the southeastern part of the state with heavy rain. Officials say roads are washed out, making travel, travel difficult in the area. We've been monitoring live shots in the area this morning, and they're still continuing to see heavy rain. Forecasters say they can see as much as five more inches of rain as they continue water rescues taking place in some parts of Texas.